Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And today we are talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 5, new episode that just dropped a few hours ago. Right. Uh, um, this week we are doing it alone, though, because we're back to our, our early schedule because I have work in about an hour. So, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. that means it's harder to get guests. That's 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 great. Uh, we can do it. It's fine. Yeah. It's yeah. it's everything. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little confused because all of these popped up. Smash that uh, skip. I mean, like... so I, I I just typed in because we've got our skip button that doesn't do anything on our intro. I, I in our chat, I just decided <laughs> to be funny as the intro was playing and hit the smash that skip. That's but I think I had it set to all, so it sends it to everyone, not just YouTube. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not on Facebook right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I have access of your Facebook account. That's dangerous. So I thought it was, I thought it was just like a an auto thing that happened. That's great though. <laughs> It's good to see that that if it if it's coming through Facebook, it has the Facebook logo, so we know where the comments where, are coming from. Yeah, I've noticed it in the past um, when we've had like random bots on Twitch that are telling yes, us to buy subscribers yeah. and things. The, so like the twi the Twitch one pops up every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, but uh, some people who are real and not bots, uh, my sister Jeremy Kelly. Jeremy's and... glad that we're back early this week, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice. It's nice because I can get the audio version up fairly early. I like it and, because it means that I haven't seen anyone else's reactions or reviews yet, and right. so we we come in like untainted, on un, like, and I th I think you just get a better, more honest reaction because whether yeah. you want to listen to them or not, when you start reading and listening to other people's opinions, you're gonna take some of that on, for good right. and for bad. So right over on uh, on jay's podcast geek dad life um he's been covering obi-wan kenobi and i was like eh, i'm not gonna i don't want to talk about obi-wan kenobi twice in a day uh -huh. um he does that in the evening um it turns out i like the show a whole lot and didn't mind talking to him so i've been showing up there at the end of the day awesome. talking about the episode all over again and the thing is there's definitely a day's worth of Discourse. Twitter reading and hot takes <laughs> that that make their way into it, um, including myself, like things that I don't notice at yeah. this time of day that it's like, oh, did you notice this? Because yeah. the, the, the hot takes come in real, real quick. And so um, that's what I like about doing it early. And even when we it do it at great. like nine, when we do it at nine, I already see things. Um, mm, me too. Uh, uh, and so it's it's because um, you can't avoid it. No. You want to know more about the episode. It's just a lot. I like this version where we do it early. You point out stuff that I didn't notice. Hopefully I point out stuff you didn't notice. And then Always. we have the chat. Yeah. Who's, who's here to uh, sort of, they can go on Twitter at the same time. They can, you know, they have all the different. Are, everyone's, stuff. everyone's seeing different things. Everyone has different opinions yeah. and yeah, yeah. Things that they like, things that they don't like. It's, it's and cool. Like it sort makes of the... it more of a communal thing. I like the gut reaction. Um, a lot of it tends to be positive because we just saw a brand new Star Wars thing. Yeah, that's um, just who we are as people. I think we yeah. we enjoy seeing new Star Wars. So, so none of the I think I feel like we're we're more riding a high this early in the morning, mm -hmm. and um, I feel like if I were to go back and rewatch Book of Boba Fett, maybe and redo episodes, it might be a little bit different. But it, it's it's fun to just be able to get it out there, and for us, sort of, kind of striving to be a more positive side. It, I was gonna say, yeah, it it's sort of it's it, implied in our mandate. It's it's sort of it's how we roll anyway. We are we generally would rather highlight the things that we like than dig into the things that we don't like. Right, right. But we do find some stuff like that. Of course, we do. Um, uh, Fetz is here. He mentioned something on Twitter that I actually kind of agree with. I, I don't really care about it that much, but like de aging, yeah, appears to not be used on this episode, and that is something I noticed. It was and very noticeable it, as soon as Hayden Christensen turned around, right? And for me, oh, and and like Obi Wan's wig, or I don't even know if it was a wig, if they're trying to do something with his hair. The but wig, it's I'm one fine of those things because of how inconsistent it is in Attack of the Clones. I, I feel like for me, yeah, exactly. But I feel like for me, um, it's much easier for me to get over 
oh, they didn't de-age him mm-hmm. than it is to analyze his de-aging through the whole scene. I'm, I, I understand yeah. what happened. I'm not going to let it. I'm, I'm just going to enjoy the scene. Because I remember watching Mandalorian um, season two finale with Luke and just like staring at him. How, um, yeah, it's the, the how do you do that kind <laughs> of situation. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. sitting there just staring. You're looking for the seams. Like that's the kind of thing you look for. Like when I was watching uh, the de-aging of, um, of uh, Michael Douglas in Ant-Man yeah so it it, yeah it's a it's a little strange and i'm like i I think they did makeup maybe they try to do some makeup i'm I'm sure they did something something, but Uh, he he i mean since we haven't seen we haven't seen hayden christensen i mean it's like since 2005 yeah so it's a big leap it's not like Mm -hmm. we've seen him for the last you know gradually get older it's a hard cut and in this point of time, like you and I watched uh, Attack of the Clones relatively recently. I've been watching right. some old Clone Wars and stuff like that, which obviously is animated, but it's it meant to be more of that time frame. Yeah. Just reading and looking at the cover for Brotherhood, where it is that Anakin, like probably weeks before, like weeks after this scene takes place. Mm. Um, it's, it is jarring, but... I don't know. The de-aging thing is still such a new technology that it's being developed at the moment that we're used to seeing characters change age. I am anyway, like I think just yeah. through franchises. So yeah, it's noticeable. Um, could they have made him look younger? Probably. But yeah. if they want to put the budget elsewhere into making that entire scene, whenever we cut back to it, look beautiful. I think that was the n- nicest looking stuff in this episode, yeah. possibly in this show so far. Um, like I, I know you're not particularly a fan of like the the handheld movements and stuff like that. When we get stuff, but there's a lot in this episode. There is a lot in this episode, and in that scene, like there's some sort of swooping camera moves as they're sparring. Yeah, that's fine. And I, I think they look great. It's done so well, and it is, it's distinct. It separates it from the rest of the scene where it's close and dirty and muddy. This feels pristine. Um. We got a comment just here from Scott D uh, asking when we think that this happened. Uh, if it's during the Clone Wars, I think that it's immediately before they go to see Padme at the beginning of Attack of the Clones. Oh, that's where okay. I like mentally have put it, and I think it's one of those things that we know that um, Sam Jackson's mentioned wanting to come back as Mace Windu, yada yada, all of that. Like you and I, I think are in agreement that don't need it, don't don't want to see it, don't need it. Need it. Um, I think if they had immediate plans to do anything with that, it it would have been the prime location to get at the end of all of those scenes, at the end of their sparring, to get like a, a hollow projection message from Sam Jackson going, we need you to report to 500 Republica to go see uh, Senator Amidala or whatever. Like, we have an assignment for you, just a, a little message. But like, we didn't need, we didn't, we don't need that. But that would have placed it in a distinct time as well. Whereas now they can leave it open. It can be interpreted whenever. I do think it's pre attack of the clones. I think it's not in the clone Wars yet. Cause as we know in brotherhood now, uh, he's knighted pretty much immediately after Geonosis. Yeah. And, and Adam Fraser says that he has both hands. Ah, yeah. Good point. So yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Works. He also mentioned that uh, Anakin's staring at Padme's apartment as well. So interesting i didn't notice it in the background i i saw like the senate dome off in the distance in one of the shots but i didn't notice yeah 500 republica yeah Yeah. it's cool uh i it was just opening on coruscant excited me like i was just like oh cool we're going back uh i wasn't sure when in time we were going back to at that point but i was like it's i just like seeing coruscant especially coruscant during the day it looks pretty and what's great about it it's vader's flashback Mm-hmm. I feel like both of them oh. are. It's almost like a shared because Obi Wan sort of right. launches into it a couple of times. They uh, they Anakin both. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Obi Wan does it later, which is uh, this you know key moment for both of them. Yeah, like it might be one of the first time they've they've actually gone at it together with lightsaber. Like, let's really train using live lightsabers yeah not like training yo like jungling yeah. sabers or something like that yeah 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 could be could be so it's a it's definitely a big moment i mean he does them. mention They're... that maybe he'll win this time so it's like they he yeah. everyone always loses to anakin but 
Yeah, I mean, let's let's just carry on talking about this training because, like, we cut back and forth to it throughout the episode, but it's, I mean, it's all one scene. And the thing that stood out to me the most in it was when Anakin sort of has Obi-Wan beaten back and beaten down and, and, and Obi-Wan sort of leaning on the floor and defending just with one arm out and uh, Anakin's just hammering down on him. It's, it's ex- an exact mirror of Return of the Jedi. Right. the exact framing of it and everything the posing and then he says like he doesn't just say you are beaten he has more to say after that but there's the 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 vader line of you are beaten it's useless to resist sort of thing which right. is from empire but yeah the the framing of it was just yeah i was like oh wow okay they it's it's reversed in Reve- uh in return of the jedi but it's yeah it's, it's like poetry but it's great. It's great because it shows later Luke has that same becoming rage. becoming Anakin. Mm-hmm. Um, They're at a similar sort of point. I mean, there's a few moments in this where Anakin looks rageful, like during this sparring, mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, sure, you're trying to win. That's that's the point of any sparring session. But yeah, I mean, Obi Wan's calling him out on it. It's like your your desire for victory is it's a detriment. His need for it. Yeah. Um, uh, Anakin's lightsaber, mm-hmm. I feel, is inconsistent with the one we see in Attack of the Clones. It has so a, a black, black band. Tank. Yeah, I was gonna. I did not the black think band. It, I don't think it looks like that. And I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. I'm usually pretty good with these things because I. Yeah. When I think of Anakin's Episode Two saber, I think of the plastic one that came on whatever their version of Force Friday was. And I remember looking at it and it having the shape of Vader's saber, but without mm-hmm. the black bits, it had it was all like silver. It may have one that he, a black handle. It's the one that he loses in the droid factory. Dooku. Right? Oh, to yeah, Dooku. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he loses one to Dooku. Yeah. That's just some random lightsaber that he's been given by a right. Backstreet Boy or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So Insane. so yeah, the, I so I'm, I can't remember. I really want to start tracking these these lightsabers, especially the box of lightsabers. There's um, a lot of lightsabers in there, and I I'm I'm pretty good with like the main character lightsabers. Like I know what those look like, mm-hmm. and these clearly aren't main character lightsabers. But I, I'm wondering if you can go in. If anyone's gone in, uh, I'm sure they will by the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I think but, I uh, I fired up YouTube, and there's already a video that has that box of lightsabers as their thumbnail um okay i'm I'm sure that those videos are out there you know what i i bet you today we'll get something from alex over at star wars explained about the box lightsabers he would probably i feel like he might know that stuff like that's the one i want to watch i mean uh, if not they've they've got their their library (laughs) of reference books just behind them so i'm sure that yeah uh alex and molly will be able to find some stuff in there right um i i have been rereading some of the old clone wars comics some of the old legend stuff now the like the quinlan voss uh john ostrander right. jan decima stuff uh, i've been going back through all of those uh, i'm about halfway through and i'm i'm really enjoying it but it definitely definitely feel of their time but because of that i've seen a lot of quinlan voss's lightsaber help uh i i didn't free frame the show or anything but i i didn't notice that one uh, yet yeah, we know that Quinn has been yeah. through Jabim and all of that. We did get an establishing yeah. shot of Jabim, which I liked because it is a bit more consistent. Yeah. It looks muddy. There was no rain coming down, but it looked. It, I think we heard some thunder and lightning in the background, sort of thing. So it's yeah, yeah it's a wet, muddy planet. It's a bit like Mimban. The sets, the sets still look Land of the Lost to me. It, it's, yeah, it's very it's tough. Just generic cave set, and I feel like. Uh, uh, the way it was shot that there's a lot of movement in the camera the movement may have been put in after the fact to make it more dynamic I, I, I don't know but um, I, I'm fine with the sort of yeah. <laughs> sort of the paper bag cave look I mean uh, Yavin, it, the Yavin base is essentially the same thing but just with a little bit more set decoration because it's a base yeah, whereas this is just a, a refugee sort of transport hub Right. The and with Yavin and then with um shoot Dakar, which is the one in um the base in uh 
Oh, the one that's up in Salisbury uh, that I used to drive past fuck. quite often. Yeah, the uh, Dakar is in. Um, yeah, Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Or yeah. Is, yeah. Um, the, there's like the, the there's like vines and stuff coming through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh like yeah, that's... inside inside there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is just flat out rocks. Um, yeah. It, it, there's there's this, I mean it's Star Wars, so it should be fantastical. But I kind of forgive it a little bit, even though they're really they kind of they kind of really jump out as bland. And it looks like we're done with it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, I forgive it because it does have the feel of a Flash Gordon. Um, I feel like Geonosis was very similar, but because there were termites and they built it like there was a lot of CG running around it. But there was a there's like an architecture to it, Mm. and I guess that show just shows you like how these people are ill-equipped and it's not really a place that was meant to be a base. It's literally a hiding place. Yeah. It's, it's a hiding spot it. that is, it's quick. Like the, I think the room that we saw at the beginning of last week's episode um, with Isaac I, Jr. I, uh, and like that with the, the <laughs> yeah. back to tank that had a little bit more going on because that felt like it was almost like his office and everything. Right. It could I I maybe it just I can chalk it up to like maybe the cinematography, maybe they could add some smoke or do yeah. some hard shadows and stuff. It doesn't matter. Um it's 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 a Flash Gordon serial, and so I'll exactly. forgive it for that. Yeah, exactly. not there's and also less... it's a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a TV show. And I know there's you know high watermarks in TV like Lost and Breaking Bad and stuff, but I mean, you know, this is a six, six part miniseries, and I know it's Lucasfilm and Star Wars and ILM and all that. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're budgeted for a streaming service. Yeah. So it's not being released in theaters. It's not and... Stranger Things where they're spending $30 million an episode on, right. on what? Like <laughs> <laughs> new bicycles. <laughs> uh, they're good. They're going on eBay and buying 80s shit. It's like that. that <laughs> yeah, they have the to budget. because everyone's just all like, sweet, we can make some money off of this. <laughs> those duffer brothers suckers <laughs> yeah scott d says my only complaint about these episodes is the cinematography feels like tv which it is and that's one of the things i've said about since the beginning but then you get scenes like the the star destroyer bridge and it just looks amazing it looks exactly. on par it may be even look better than some of the star destroyer stuff i've seen on episode nine yeah and i, I like episode nine i like, yeah i'd need to get back and watch but yeah, I mean, but it looks what's on par great, with anything. Yeah, what's great about that is you can tell they're using the volume. Yeah, because the light of uh, hyperspace is bouncing off of Vader's helmet. It's bouncing off the window sills. I'm cool. like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Oh, we get what? we get new angles as well, which I like. We get like, yeah. that high one. It's almost like a security camera where you'd yeah. imagine it, but like getting a high angle where you see both the the control pits and things with Vader on the bridge. Yeah. Like, I guess those where it's familiar locations, but a, a new twist on it. I love that stuff. I guess I I don't really think it looks better. I think it looks more classic Star Wars because in episode yeah. nine, everything's so dark. Yeah. Um, and in this, you can see everything. Uh, assuming they built that bridge, uh, it's an actual full set because it looks like they're also using Star Destroyer bridges in um, Andor. It makes sense. So, it's, so It seems like a pretty universal Star Wars set that you'd at least have it flat packed that you can bust out whenever you need to. Yeah, they could split the budget between shows mm. um, i think this show in general it's felt like there's been a lot less volume usage like there are certain scenes where you can you know that it's going to be there because of practicalities like right. they're not building the entire transport ship and having it take off and everything um mm. but there is a lot more enclosed spaces there's a lot more sets for for good or for ill like there's a lot more of that it feels like to me yeah and i think that might just come down to hey hayden hey you and like you had to work with a lot of green and blue screens before how about we give you something to act against this time (laughs) (laughs) they're probably so focused on their fights i don't think yeah i don't think they mind um so yeah i guess that this is where we saw because we saw that behind the scenes of hayden christensen training with a lightsaber again um this um, i assume it'll be for this scene i don't think we're going to get any more uh and i like the placement of it because it's still the master and apprentice situation. They're not both Jedi Knights or Jedi Masters mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, so as much as it would have been very cool, and I think a lot of us would have liked to have seen 
them in their Clone Wars armor um, yeah. and maybe a scene during the Clone Wars. This scene for the story that they've been telling and the placement of it makes a lot more sense. It's more intimate. You don't need to have a random Ahsoka running around in the background of a shot. You don't need to see Cody or Rex or anything like that. It'll all be cool. Yeah. But it's not the story that they're telling here. The story that they're telling yeah. is Anakin and Obi-Wan. It's Vader and Obi-Wan. So that keeping it tight just on those two in the Jedi Temple with them like, sparring as like, not quite as brothers at that point in time. I think that's, that's it's important. And that's what I like about this show too. It's about these two characters and it's not about what's cool. It's mm. not about the cameos. Um, again, we've only had like one cameo and that's by Tamara Morrison, but it fit the story so well. And it was so brief um, as well. Yeah. So like how hey, Organa isn't in, really a cameo. He's more of a character. It's a small role. Same as it's... same as Owen though. He yeah. he serves he serves this story. Yeah. It's not, you know, uh blank showing up like uh I don't know, Kersantin or something. Mm. Um which was like a minor cameo. Yeah. It's when it's 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 the it's the felony of it all. The the bringing in I don't think there's Playing with the toys. any any felony characters in here not well i mean uh yeah because the clones were already around so like yeah, yeah no Luke not just really came up with those dudes yeah so he cast um, tomorrow like yeah, yeah yeah so i i like that it's it's really focused on this um and i i still am very much enjoying it I actually i really enjoyed this episode i did um I I watched um, it once through fully, uh, and then I skimmed through it like just now, just to get through and to right. make my notes and stuff that I've got here. Um, yeah. Little peek behind the curtain when I, because I'm up earlier because of the time difference, I get to watch it before Ralph, so I'll watch it through once and I'll I'll make notes that we have as our like our searchable terms, and so I yeah. occasionally like will miss spellings and things like that, and so when I go back and before I send them over. Uh, I I'll do a quick Google like uh, Haja. I wanted to make sure that I had Haja's name spelt right, so I did that. Mm -hmm. And then it's then that I start seeing all the lists of the reactions and things like that for the episode. That's the only time that I see anything before we record this podcast. All right. Uh, but yeah, and then I'll I'll go back through it and I I make my notes. But yeah, this one I was just sort of enjoying the ride of it um, mm -hmm. more than making a ton of them. Like there was one. <laughs> sort of moment that I felt like the pacing was a little bit strange and that's when sort of Obi-Wan is talking to Reaver at the door great right. loved all of that and oh, then he that goes, was I that I love that scene I, I, I do due to cries at Star Wars and we've been we've kind of nailed it from day one like what our motivations were yeah. and and all that stuff but when the scene came down to it it was like her acting was great uh uh, Ewan's reactions were great. Mm, and the realizations. flashbacks really, yeah, all of that stuff. It's yet another thing that he didn't realize that's going to weigh him down even more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, and then he goes back in. They, I mean, she sticks her lightsaber through the door. Um, yeah. They, the fight starts and then he, they, they sort of retreat back and then he goes to sort of give himself up to buy them time to escape, but then immediately escapes that capture. And it's like that he wasn't going yeah. to do that. He was just going, I can get through to her. I can, I can talk her into this. And it's that faith in it's what we, we think he's going to do with Vader as well. Like the Obi-Wan once thought as you did. Um, but he, he thinks that about uh, Reaver as well. Like he thinks he can bring her to his side to at this point take on Vader and he does he gets through to her and she she starts questioning it. it's like he'll see me coming and he'll be focused on me which when she sort of basically sends him away it's I think she's almost signing her own death warrant at that point because if it had been Obi-Wan and Reva both there I think the Vader would have been focused solely on Obi-Wan and he might yeah, have I was surprised Obi Wan didn't stay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was it was interesting the fact that he then sort of bailed and then went straight back. But 
I don't know, the the drive to protect. Maybe he thought he hadn't got through to her. Um, yeah. It's interesting, but the the sort of the back and forth of it felt weird to me. And it was almost like when he left, um, Leia was up in the vent and it was like, oh, okay, that's going to be where their story parts and she'll get taken back to mm-hmm. Alderaan by Hajar or someone, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I was assuming that Obi-Wan was going to stay behind in that first transport and yeah. come out to help Reva. Mm. But there's a line in there. And again, I've only seen it once and it's been about an hour and a half. Um, the, the line where she assumes that Obi-Wan wants the same thing she does, mm. which is revenge. Yeah. And he doesn't really answer her. Is that right? I, so, I can't remember. So is this head. where the Obi-Wan once thought as you do like thing of it all? So like, because like, he got so that. We, so she's she's assuming Obi-Wan wants revenge. Mm. And Obi-Wan doesn't. He wants Anakin back. Yeah. It's, it's I mean and she says that, she Anakin says back. that to him. She's like, do we want the same thing? Like you can could you really kill him? She doesn't yeah. she doesn't believe that Obi-Wan could kill Anakin. So that's nicely setting up the fact that he doesn't want Vader destroyed. He wants him to come back. Yeah. At this point in time, as far as we're aware, I think he knows that Anakin's a bit of a monster, but I think he still thinks that there's good in him. And I I would assume, and like that's not a good way to go into a Star Wars, but I, my guess would be that by the end of next week's episode is when he mentally gets to the point of the he's more machine now twisted and evil it's funny that we uh a a couple things so first of all i think it's funny that everybody last week was up in arms that we didn't get a clone wars era flashback um and then we got it this week so just patience yeah (laughs) patience but the thing that cracked me up was patience the opening of the show had the disclaimer the disclaimer that they put on after episode one Oh yeah. About about some things are uh, a little dicey on this episode. Uh and as soon as that popped up, I'm like, oh, we're gonna get Reva's flashback. So either, it felt like a spoiler. <laughs> so either <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're gonna see the younglings again. That warning I think might be region specific because I didn't get that over here. Yeah, we got the we got the warning. Well, I, it, I mean it, it makes sense. Better um, over there. <laughs> they're different. Um certain things are definitely mm. better. Um, well, I mean, kids getting shot at. at yeah, yeah, we don't school. really have that too much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but as soon as that popped up on my screen, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. So we're gonna get we're gonna get that flashback. <laughs> um, uh, Jeremy Kelly, uh, Kerry, uh, uh, found uh, Corin was in this again. Corin Horn, we're assuming Corin Horn anyway. Uh, the kid that um. Haja was saving. I didn't. I didn't clock him, but then I couldn't remember what he looked like from the first or second episode, anyway. Uh, but that's cool. They're there and they get away. Um, that'll be a nice story for him to tell when he joins Rogue Squadron later on. I can hope. Um, and Adam uh, pointed out here. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. to Talo and Ned B going out like Vasquez yeah. and Gorman in Aliens. That's a great analogy. That's a great like similarity between the two of them i i knew that ned b was going as soon as they started showing some like lots of close-ups on him on that in that hallway fight um yeah it it was like okay this is when we're gonna get his sacrifice to save some people the fact that tala got shot and killed as well it's sad because she was a cool character uh she went out like a champ she she had the the thermal detonator which is a if you're gonna go that's a pretty good way to go but is it the first time we've seen one actually detonated the the close of it yeah i thought the same thing i was like that's a cool little moment we sort of see the way that it explodes um so yeah that was fun i i did enjoy that but yeah it's it sort of makes sense it's all these people that are sacrificing themselves for obi-wan and he's carrying the weight of all of this um, and I think also Princess Leia. It seems like everybody she's... is like get her to the ship. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even when um, uh, what's his name? Roken. Roken. Uh, when Roken first gets off the ship, he's like, "We got her." Like ever, right. and everyone's happy about that. Like that's that mm-hmm. was the mission. It's like right. before he left to go and help. 
it was like, okay, guys, like this is one of our transports that we're going to get you all away from, but that girl's really important. We've got to go and help her. What do you think? And they were all on board with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, she's she's a leader. She's already at this point, she's a leader when she steps up and says like, right. get me a ladder. I can sort this out. Uh, yeah. I don't know why it would have taken him four or five hours because um, and- it just felt like finding the right plug. <laughs> <laughs> right it, that <laughs> took a little bit i'm like why are we still doing this oh yeah they need to get the door open yeah. um obi-wan says that he trusts her yeah which is a bail organa line in uh, rogue one yeah like all of the all of the sort of callbacks can be taken very cheesily but they're but what's great is they're not doing the hello there's and there hasn't been a there single was, hello there has there no there's been one Good. line there was one line in this episode that obi-wan said where i'm like i think that's in star wars interesting okay um yeah adam adam just points out that the get her a ladder is a lot like the get this man a shield which is yeah it's a great get get this girl a ladder (laughs) (laughs) that classic layer accessory that comes with all the toys a ladder oh my god the ladder (laughs) (laughs) um Uh, yeah uh, yeah uh are we? We're not done, are we? No, we're not done. Um, I had a few. I have things. no notes. I took no oh, really? notes. Oh, really? I took a few. Um, so all right, Bail Organa, that message, dude, oh, yeah. be a little bit more subtle. Like he's, it's as soon as he started saying the children, Tatooine, Owen, he started name dropping too many things. It's like, yeah. If if Obi Wan is dead, you don't know where this communicator's like going what whose hands it's in like you know that he was going to rescue her you know that it might be a risk (laughs) in the fact that reba found it and she knows exactly who owen is yeah she's met (laughs) owen she she didn't get all the details she didn't get all the details but she got owen she got tattooing she got children family family or something yeah so i mean she's I, i i assume that she's gonna put herself in that back tank and that's where she's heading next yeah um but to what end because She's not with Vader. She's not with the Inquisitors, but she's also not good, which is an interesting place for her to be. She is still very much a bad guy in this show. Yeah. Right. And she's not she's not looking for redemption. Mm-mm. She's I think that's the thing that Obi-Wan was hoping that she she could be redeemed. She could be a Jedi youngling sort of again yeah. or the equivalent of, but she's so, not interested in that at all. I'm assuming she got stabbed in her one stomach. As opposed to the Grand Inquisitor, which I believe I read somewhere. I didn't look into it yesterday that Rupert oh, Friend no. Rupert Friend mentioned something about the Inquisitor, reminding everyone that the Inquisitor has two stomachs or something. I, that <laughs> I sounds know. like he's just trying to be cheeky. <laughs> right. But this was like I don't know. I didn't get I didn't read it. It was a nerdist post, I think. But oh, okay. um but I mean we weren't surprised seeing him come back. Yeah. Uh and the fact that Reva did get stabbed as a kid was interesting. I thought that she was just going to see her friends and then manage to escape. But did, the fact that did she get stabbed, or is that just her looking at the Vader's uh, eyes? It could be. It could be imagining what, like, I don't know. Yeah, Anakin. I'm not sure. I like the fact that Anakin, I assume, has known all along who she is. That she's that young lady. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think there's been ever any doubt. Like. She might have thought that she was hiding the, that fact. I think that the because but... the the thing that didn't which makes that make sense, and the thing that didn't make sense at the beginning of this episode, he makes her Grand Inquisitor for knowing where Obi Wan, what planet so Obi Wan's on. So quick. Which which he's he showed up at the Inquisitor base in the ocean at the fortress. Um, didn't give her a Grand Inquisitor then. Even no, he was ready she to pointed him. him. She pointed him in the right direction. Yeah. She also pointed him in the right direction on um, fucking wherever else they were going. What, what was the other place where um, where they escaped to on the, with uh, with Zach Braff? Oh, oh. Uh, d- d- she d- also she also told Vader he was on that planet. Yeah, she, she didn't get Grand Inquisitor then. Apusa. So why all of a sudden? give her Grand Inquisitor now just mm. because she knows what planet Obi-Wan's on because this is the third time 
that she knows what uh, planet Obi Wan's on, and that he comes. escapes. Yeah. It's like a, so maybe maybe promote her when she catches him fully, but like not. Until yeah, then. so I'm like, this is this is this makes no sense that out of nowhere he's giving her this grand unless it is all just a ploy, unless it's a ploy, which is what I thought at the end because he yeah. fully knew that she was uh, he was just waiting for her to yeah. do her thing again, um, like like a lot of it it's felt like okay cool as soon as he makes a grand inquisitor i was like okay cool another reason why she's not going to survive this or she's going to be out of the inquisitorious at least like by the end of it because again we know from seeing rebels that the grand inquisitor from the beginning is still around somewhere um healing up healing his his stomach wound but she's certainly not the grand inquisitor she's nowhere to be seen at that point in time so yeah. yeah she's she's not making it out of at least the inquisitorious but yeah. now now she's she's going to be wanted by the empire if she ever pops up again yeah adam says they kept it somewhat open to interpretation but she did react in the flash flashback as if she got stabbed yeah. so maybe the lightsaber when she was a little kid stabbed a perfectly clean hole in her and she survived and, and vader Anakin's- stabbed her in the exact same hole he does like he does like that same perfect. belly stab. She yeah. grabs a lightsaber at the end when she's crawling towards the the hollow projector that was like intact, and hers got ripped in half. He he broke hers in half. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know where that other one came from. That was one little consistency I noticed, and I was like, huh, what? Well, her saber is a full circle, and mm. the one she picked up was a half a circle. Oh, was that only a half? Okay. Yeah, so I think the one she was using had like just a quarter of a circle, and Vader had the half one. And okay. Vader must have just dumped it with her. Yeah, I don't um, think he cares. He's not sentimental about those things. They yeah. are. He's not. um his his uh his her fight with uh, Vader was yeah. great. I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, as Stevie points out there, that he didn't even bother drawing his lightsaber. He didn't need to. She's so beneath him. Um, but that's sort of like that's sort of like mirror uh had to have been choreographed um looked great it did um like and it him was... just just twisting her arm and moving it around and just oh it was so good the slowing down of the blades rotating as well was super cool like it's mm. really really showing off his power i mean it go- it starts earlier when he grabs the shuttle um mm. like he's I, this is full like power this... vader this is the first time we've seen that too. In live action, someone yeah, using the force against, comics, but not in live action that I can think of. Yeah, oh, using Ray. the force against a lightsaber. Ray does it in uh, Rise of Skywalker uh, when she when grabs she... it and she thinks that she's killed Chewie. When she's she's battling Kylo and they're both grabbing the transport, pulling it apart. Oh no! I just meant like a, a someone, one person using a saber and oh, one right. person using the force. Oh yeah, yeah. The I mean, and we're seeing forth. it at the same time, like with Obi Wan doing the same thing, essentially, like being able to avoid Anakin um, and his, all of his aggressive attacks in the sparring session. He, yeah. he's, he's has his, he's disarmed, but then he's still managing to avoid and get away, and then because of that, using Anakin's rage against him to take his lightsaber. Yeah. Uh, goes back to the whole this weapon is your uh yeah this weapon is your life situation it's mm-hmm. anakin was always losing his lightsabers so maybe the one that he had in that training session he lost somewhere between there and a couple Padme's of days later apartment. yeah maybe <laughs> just dropped it on the elevator yeah it's it's, it's interesting I, I need to look at the lightsaber again mm-hmm. um because I love them. And I was like, that's not right, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, it's really, because the, the, so, the attention to detail on the, on Luke's saber in episode or in part one of this, this uh, show, I was like, oh, they're really paying attention to the props in this one. I was mm. like, hmm, something's not right with that saber, but I'm not, I'm not too concerned. I, I guarantee you there's some sort of reasoning bes- behind why they use that one with the black band and the black tip but it's, i think it's just where it is just a little bit closer to vader's i guess design yeah. wise yeah and it um, was it was weird seeing obi-wan holding it yeah 
it just yeah. didn't look right it, it was just it was, didn't it was weird i loved seeing um like the the two lightsabers with vader though against reva when he he splits hers in half yeah like the the akimbo lightsabers akimbo basically was almost it was like he, it's almost like inquisitors double bladed lightsabers are beneath him yeah and it's like, he's like I'm not gonna, you don't, I don't it. need the tricks. I don't need the the gimmick lightsabers. I yeah. just give me my blade if if I really needed to. Um, yeah, he his... never uses his, huh? No, not yet. He only uses the split one. Mm. That's funny. I think he's saving um, it. He's saving that one for Obi Wan. We saw him use it yeah, against Obi Wan before, but yeah, I think that's gonna be when he uses that blade. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing... We're jumping around again, but that's how we do. Uh, I really okay. enjoyed when they're coordinating the evacuation, when... Um, uh, I keep on forgetting his name. Roken um, is saying, like, I'll help you, but we've got to get these people off. I thought that was cool, because that's him stuck sticking to his mission. He's he's on the humanitarian mission. Mm -hmm. Like, he's he will help Leia, but he also wants to help all of these people. Um which I think she would appreciate as well, especially grown up. She would be like, no, let's get everyone away. At that point, Obi-Wan has come around to a much different place than he was at the beginning of the series where he was single focused. Mm -hmm. uh, I think now he was stepping more into the that General Kenobi role. And when he starts addressing yeah. everyone, he's... Right. it is more like the General Kenobi that we see during the Clone Wars where he's he's a leader. And I know I almost half was waiting for him to find some stormtrooper armor to put on yeah. his shoulders and chest. The, the shoulder pads. So close. And when he picks up when he picks up that robe, if they'd just been the shoulder pads underneath or something. Yeah. Yeah. I do like I do like the robes that he's wearing in this, like at this point in the series, though. They're they're cool. They're they're not full like authentic Jedi mm. robes, but they're they're closer to it. And it looks good. It's a good look for him. Right. I'm trying to think if they're if they match um alec guinness's i don't because so. it's a darker outside and the light inside yeah. and i want to say in the prequels he had like a light tan yeah yeah he was he was light all over it was the so these are like the, a little bit darker yeah but yeah i don't think it's, i think i think those ones are still in the cave on tattooing yeah he did some good force pushing yeah. So he's getting more in tune with the force he's getting back into it i don't think he'll reach the level of being being able to like do a flying somersault out of a moving, a crash landing Jedi starfighter and do a somersault and killing battle droids. Well, that's it. Like um, it's still, he's still very much, he's, I mean, we see the difference when we, when he's training yeah. with Anakin to where he's fighting in the tunnel. Like even there, like in the one episode, it's, he's, he's a lot slower. He's a lot more methodical. He's not the same Obi-Wan anymore, but he's, he's better than he was at the start of the season. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the... he, he, I saw a lot of uh, comments last week when he was in the hallway with the lightsaber with the stormtrooper in the foreground and and everyone was saying he's back baby. That's oh. Obi-Wan and I'm like Not I'm like quite. he killed he killed the a, a, a hallway of stormtroopers. Yeah. Um he's definitely not <laughs> doing the stuff he was he's not hanging from a droid you know hundreds of miles above the the surface he's not just horizontal. diving out of a window not, because he thought oh there's yeah something. yeah right. yeah there's a little bit of him there but yeah. i i don't the point is i think of the show is he can't get back to that he's got to turn into alec guinness by the time the show is over um and i'm hoping they don't do a season two because i'd like them to just finish this off right here uh next yeah. week um but yeah, we're we're never gonna get that Obi Wan back unless we get some flashbacks. Um, it it flashbacks will be interesting be to fine, see. But like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think we need it. Like, I don't no. see after this flashback scene. I don't think we need another flashback. I think right. this this one did it all of. It carried all the weight that a flashback scene would have needed to carry. Right, and I feel like in your last, in part six. You're not going to need to all of a sudden have like Ahsoka in your flashback or right. unless to... there's something in there that can serve this story. Yeah. I, I think we're good with the flashback we got. Um, this was a good commercial for Brotherhood. For yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. it's, it's that book. I mean, they, 
it's it's Lucasfilm publishing. It's 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 all done with intent. Like, but it's it's yeah, that book and this show are really, really, really good compliments to each other. Uh, I would recommend yeah. everyone go and check it out. And if you need to know more of my thoughts on it, go and check out the video on the YouTube page where I talked about it by myself for half an hour. Yeah. Um, great book. Really great book. <laughs> Um, and yeah, the, do an audio book the, of that. it'd be worth doing. Like, um, like after yeah. next week. Yeah. 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 Um, the, uh, podcast that we both like, uh, friends of the force, they just did their review episode of it as well. And they were a lot more in depth <laughs> I than listen- I was, but it was a, it was a glowing review. Yeah. I don't listen to their, their non live action stuff. Fair. Cause I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't read the books obviously. Yeah. Um, but I feel like after next week, I might get the audiobook of Brotherhood. I feel like, I think I like can, that'll be manageable because um, I, 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 I've seen the Clone Wars. I enjoyed them. I don't need to revisit them unless there's something that's really going to be coming up that I need to be reminded of. So a new sort of prequel era story. I mean, this is that's really the only place to get it. It really is. Uh, and it's, it's done so well. It's, yeah. it's really, really good. Uh, I would absolutely yeah. highly che- recommend checking it out. Um, I don't think I've got anything else. Yeah. I mean, the, I only, lo- the, the thing is, like, I, I know he looked older, but it yeah. was still great seeing Hayden Christensen as Anakin. He, and the he performance looked older, but he matched. sounded, yes, he sounded like Anakin in episode two. Like, his line deliveries were perfect, they were spot on. Like, the inflection that he put on everything was, it was exactly that sort of still, he's a Padawan, but he knows that he's probably at this point surpassed his master. He's in the same, like, he's the same guy who in a couple of days time is complaining to Padme in her apartment as she's packing that in, in many ways he's better than Obi-Wan. Yeah. Like it's that guy. Obi-Wan's holding him back. Yeah. It's, it's that same, same guy. Um, and the movements, all of their fight, especially like as they're sort of both on their feet and tracking back and forth across the room. It's, it's exactly what they're doing in uh, the beginning of the fight, at least in revenge of the Sith. Like, so it's, it is that they have trained together. They know each other's moves inside out. It's what we know of that fight and why that fight is so dynamic because they, Obi-Wan seems like genuinely surprised at some of the moves that are happening. That's it. And And it's, it's, and it's, it's like, Oh, this might be, yeah, it might be a little bit much. Yeah. Yeah. He's I mean, yeah, Anakin's going hard. Like there is not pulling any punches on that. Like even when yeah. uh Obi-Wan is disarmed and he's like there's more more ways to fight them with a weapon sort of thing. Um Anakin's so, still swinging at him despite the fact that Obi-Wan's defenseless. Yeah. Hmm. So setting this setting up next week. Next week's the finale. And we have Essentially, what sounds like Reva versus Obi Wan on Tatooine. Um, do you think we'll get another Vader fight? Yeah, I think I think because at the end of this, um, uh, Roken says to Obi Wan, "Like the hyperdrive is out and they're behind us." Like, I think that there's an escape pod on that transport, and Obi Wan essentially <laughs> sacrifices himself again. He's like, "Right, okay, I gotta go because he wants me. You've got to get." her away i'm saving all of you people but you have to promise me that you get her back to her father on older um yeah maybe he maybe he tasks that to um haja or something like which would be cool um because he does i'm seem still like waiting he's... for the other shoe to drop on haja it seems i know I, 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 I like I, him i think i want you know, him to be good i want him to be force sensitive like i think that there's still that potential that like because he says it was like being a real jedi it's hard yeah. it's like he, there is still a chance that he is was a youngling or something, or at least a fourth sensitive yeah. kid who knew about the Jedi. Um, yeah. So I think he Obi Wan has to escape. He gets captured, and then he's he's with Vader. They fight. He is presumed dead um, by Vader, but gets away obviously. So that Vader thinks he's dead. He goes back to Tatooine, and that's where he'll confront Reva as i don't know as she's approaching ben and threatening luke or something maybe but 
I don't know. I don't want Luke to see a lightsaber. Right. I really don't want Luke to see a lightsaber. Yeah, I don't think he will. I hope not. I hope not. Ben can. Uh, be Owen can. Him. Owen can. That'd be okay. Um, yeah. Maybe she's threatening Owen and Baru or something. But yeah, I don't want Luke to see a lightsaber because he's so mystified. He's like, what is it? Like, he doesn't even know what a lightsaber is. He shouldn't see. He shouldn't see force. You. He shouldn't see the lightsaber. That's where I. And what percentage do you think we'll see Qui Gon? Uh, 95? Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Almost hundred. If if we don't see him, we're gonna get a Liam Neeson voice. Like I was, I was, I I tweeted it out last night that I I don't know. I just had a feeling that he was gonna come up in this episode. Um. Right. But he didn't. Uh, I'm I'm fine with being wrong. I don't care about being wrong. I don't need to be right <laughs> about everything. Um, right. But I I am still 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 really do think that he's going to be in this show because of how much he was referenced. It was the one of the first things Obi Wan said, and then like halfway through he was mentioned again. So and like the three three or four episodes in a row at the start, it was all. Qui Gon, Qui Gon, Qui Gon. Yeah. Um, so if we don't, it feels strange to me. I'm not going to say that it feels bad, um, but it's it's unexpected. Like at the moment, I do expect to see or at very least hear Qui Gon. Um, yeah, he'll be there. If if Liam Neeson doesn't want to appear in live action, then he'll do a voice he, we've known we know that he'll do a voice he's done voices he's, for I, I, he's been on the orville in okay. full on in person so he, he's he's gonna be available to do a force ghost thing where he can run in and be on a green screen and the end call it a day yeah he'll do it yeah he'll do it and again especially seen... with Obi, with obi-wan with uh, ewan mcgregor being the executive producer on the show or an executive producer just, like i feel like just give him a call he Come on, dude. Done. We like, and, and I then, would love uh, to see. I'd like to see uh, a shot of, I don't know, it, maybe it's a forced vision or something like of, of Hayden's Anakin interacting with Qui Gon would be really interesting, because we never got to see that. So it would be. I don't know how they'd quite do it, but maybe he appears know. to Anakin or something. I don't know. I don't know. Can Can you imagine if they're both fighting, if like Anakin and Vader are fighting, and then uh qui-gon appears he's like kids 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 settle <laughs> down like i love both of my sons equally <laughs> it's like ghost of egon where yeah. qui-gon's holding obi-wan's lightsaber um do you think we'll get a haja haja is that his name haja, is yeah. uh is uh his last name and his first name is kitster will that happen no we it's, get... we've got his last name i didn't write it down but it's out there Hey, I, I always felt like Kitster was a uh, a nickname. We've seen we've seen Kitster uh, just recently. He was in the Darth Vader comic. Um, oh, really? How's he, he was, doing? Uh, he's all right. Uh, I think Vader confronts him. Does he kill him? But yeah, we see Kitster and Walt. What? Um, yeah, Kitster and Walt. I'll, I'll find the screenshot. I'll I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll send it to you later on. Uh, but yeah, he turns out that Kitster and Walt uh, were saved by Sabe, the Handmaiden. Uh, Paddy in the inter- intervening years after like as a almost as a wedding present she sent Sabe out to go and rescue slaves from Tatooine like to get some of them away and Kitster and Wald were two of them so in the time like it's after Empire Strikes Back um, Vader is actually rolling with Sabe at that point and they go and visit Kitster and Wald who are basically refugees um yeah i i can't remember it was last month's issue literally last month's issue of darth that's vader hilarious um but yeah i was like okay cool right that's kitster that's that wraps up kitster story. <laughs> i'm i think he kills them i think vader kills kitster and world that's fucked up it's really fucked up especially because up. there's so much nice kitster stuff in brotherhood he's talking he talks about kitster so fondly <laughs> Like that's his. That was like Kitster and his mum were the only things that made his childhood good. Um, so yeah, the fact that I, I think he does kill him. I think I can't remember. Um, someone who's up there on the comment oh, on the comics and has read it more recently than me. Uh, yeah, please, I'll just uh, 
but I'll, I'll, I'll just pretend like I never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've got I've got the picture because I think I tried to send it to you, but I had poor signal at work. But I'll try and find it too. Mm, I'll send it to you later. Right. Cool. I think I've I'm, I think I'm done. I think that's that's yeah. that's all I've got. I'll pop this up. I'm ready for next week. I am. I can't wait. I really am. Uh, same time next week, and yeah. I believe. Um, I try to get a guest. I, uh, they haven't responded, so I'll see if I can get them to join us. But um, yeah, join us on um, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, kind of. I have just stuff going automatically to Facebook. So if that's a platform you're on, yeah, you can watch this live there. We'll, we'll have to get it set up so there. it goes to, to mine as well. But yeah, uh, Ralph and I don't really yeah. use Facebook. We both have yeah. Facebook, but we don't use it. But we, I recognize that that's a place people go to. People sure. might, might, might not like Twitter, but still it's at Live Action SW everywhere. And um, do us a favor and do, uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes or any other podcast feed, wherever you are, give us a five-star rating if you want to. Mm. Um, Leave a comment. Wizard. Wizard in the comment. That's, oh, yeah. That's wizard comments. Want. Uh, subscribe if you're if you're listening to us and aren't subscribed on YouTube. Go ahead and do that. Our goal right now is one thousand. I'm sure we can get one thousand uh, yeah. if you if you share this with like five friends. We'll be on our way, and then um, we can get and this that helps, monetized. That helps get Ralph to celebration next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it I don't see. It, I don't see it happening. I do have a passport, so that's out of the way. <laughs> Uh, kind of an uh, step. so I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll try to get over there. Yeah, let's let's see what we can do. Um, <laughs> me, and, me and Ed have had some discussions about this. <laughs> yeah, um, you guys are gonna be in Texas, we're gonna, we're gonna be in, in Austin a couple weeks. in a couple of weeks, yeah, yeah. So next week, I'll be on the podcast, but then I'll be gone for two weeks. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna fill those those time slots. Yeah. We'll see. You don't need to call them mini episodes just because I'm not there. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of maybe after Obi Wan, sort of kind of taking a break, but I might do a lightsaber review. Yeah, cool. To fill to fill that time, just to nice. kind of give me a breather on this stuff because I, I have. I probably won't be able to get them done before I go away, but I've got the expansion to uh, Outer Rim board game sat downstairs, ready to play. Hopefully, going to get that played at the weekend. And literally the day before I fly, uh, Shadow of the Sith comes out. So I might be able to read that throughout my holiday. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be pretty busy, but it, they're both like, it's two long flights that I've got. So I'll be able to get a good chunk through it and then finish it off when I'm back. And then I think I'm going to have a nice, instead of doing a, like a review episode, me and uh, Adam Fraser are going to sit down and we're going to have a conversation and talk about that book, which I'm really excited about because... The That's reviews awesome. just dropped yesterday and um, it's great by the sounds of it. Yeah. And I'm thinking I want to do, I'm going to see if I can do an interview um, um, on one of those two weeks. And That'd be cool. uh, I, I, I have a couple people in mind that I could reach out to. And so that'll I'm be excited. a daily link episode. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see them. And we'll see. I, I think today I'm going to start reaching out to a couple people. There's, there's, there's one that I, I'm really excited about. I think it can get going. There's another one where um, they told me that they wouldn't be on the show, but I might be able to convince them depending on the timing. Um, yeah. Of, of, people, of people were busy. People are busy doing things and it's very cool. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there. It's a nice little, or, uh, for you. or, uh, or, or we'll figure it out. Um, so we'll probably know by next week what's going to happen yes. during this this short hiatus, but we will have stuff for you available. Yep. Um, so yeah, thanks to everybody who joined us in the in the comments live. I know it's a big ask to get up and watch this show this early, but I do like doing them early okay. because uh, we're not we're not clouded by by uh, the dark side of opinions. <laughs> yeah. The, the shroud Minox. of the dark side has not fallen yet. The, the Minox, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Minox, yeah, but let's bring back Minox. Forgot about the Minox. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, until next week, everybody, uh, don't give in to hate. Celebrate the love. Punch it.